Finding the right tire pressure is a bit of a dark art. You don't really know you've got it wrong until it goes wrong. It really does affect your grip, feel, and speed. So I'm gonna try some different pressures today until I try and find the perfect numbers that suit me. We're here in Fenile Ligura, riding the roller coaster, one of the most famous trails here. Also one of the most well-used trails. It is lovely and up and down, but it gets loads of people riding down it. So there's lots of braking bumps, the stones, all sorts of things that will really affect my tires. Now let's start by saying this video is gonna be very specific to me. Um, obviously, I hope this will help you find your correct tire pressure as well. There's so many different factors that go in to find those numbers that they really can't be swapped between riders. Rider weight. Heavier riders and bikes will need tougher tires or higher pressures. Rider skill. It doesn't mean that faster riders will have to run higher pressures, although sometimes they will. Uh, they might be really fast and really smooth, which means they don't really push their tires to the edge. Slower riders can potentially run lower pressures for maximum grip, but riders that make more mistakes could end up hitting rocks or roots. And that means if they're on too low pressure, they can risk ripping the tire or puncturing the tube. Tubes or tubeless. Sometimes you can get away with running lower pressures in tubeless tires because there's no uh, tube in there to, to pinch or get a snake bite, we used to call them. But I think above a certain threshold, let's say 28 psi in the front, 30 in the back, pretty high pressures, I don't think you'll get away with running two psi less because you're running tubeless, because you're running your tires that hard for a reason. It's probably because you're really pushing into them, the type of rider that maybe rolls a tire and could potentially burp them. Type of riding. Could be cross country, marathon, trail riding, enduro, downhill, bike packing, so many different options here. Uh, and it's not always down to performance here where you might choose your tire pressure. For example, if you're going out on an epic bike packing trip into the wilds of uh, Canada and you think, well, I'll run low pressures, you could end up ripping a tire and that gets you into trouble. You're running out of spares, things like that. Uh, but definitely performance does come into it when we're talking about racing, cross country riders really have to sort of weigh up the grip versus rolling resistance actually as do downhill racers. So there's definitely a lot of experimentation with those pro riders when it comes down to tire pressures. Trail conditions, be it rocky, smooth, wet, dry, clay or sand, there's so many different variables here. You can find the perfect pressure for one trail and then it's gets dark, you know, and there's moisture on the track or it rains, or you go and ride a different trail, that sometimes you have to find the happy medium that works in the area that you ride. Type of tire. A super skinny, super lightweight tire could be run at normal pressures, even under a bigger rider if you're riding smooth trails. However, if you go to rocky trails, that tire probably won't be up to the job. So that's when you have to think about uh, how many ply the tire is. So downhill tires, two ply, so basically two sets of rubber makes it super tough. Talk about TPI, threads per inch. Uh, I've done a video where I visited the Continental Tire Factory where I'll tell you a lot more about that. But basically, I find the easiest way of sort of working out how tough a tire is, is by looking at the weight of it. If you're looking at a tire that weighs 1300 grams, that's a big, robust downhill tire. Potentially down to less than half that, maybe 600 grams for a Continental Cross King cross country tire. Um, tire width, so the volume of a tire really makes a difference to how, uh, how it rides. So big 2.4 versus a 2.2. Definitely sort of more compliance in those bigger tires, depending on the pressure. Rim width, a uh, big trend here is for getting wider rims now. It does affect the shape of the tire. So it could be a bit egg shaped with a narrow rim, which means that it might roll around a bit more. Wider rim makes a more stable tire. So there are hundreds, maybe not hundreds, but lots and lots of variables that will affect the perfect tire pressure. Have I missed any? Heat, atmospheric pressure, tire inserts. Lots of people run them now. Um, Right, on to the tests. The tires I've got on my Newproof Mega. Up front, I've got my Continental De Baron. 27.5 this bike, 2.4 up front, quite a big tire. On the back, I've got the Trail King in a 2.3. Uh, so this is my sort of faster rolling setup that I would use on an enduro bike. So the rear tire is pretty quick. I don't mind pedaling that around. However, 
If I'd have known I was doing this uh, test on this track in these conditions, I'd probably put the Baron on the back as well, because they do offer just a bit more sort of chunk to them. I, I'm less likely to puncture it, I think, just with more rubber, bit of a heavier tyre, bit more protected. And I'm going to start with my normal tyre pressures. So 28 on the rear, 26 up front, which has come down a couple of PSI from when I used to race, just because now I'm not quite as fast as I used to be. I'm not pushing my tyres quite as hard, and I'm probably less likely to smash into rocks. Run one done, using the tyre pressures that I know. And to be honest, that's, you know, I've spent years riding and years racing, and these are the pressures I've come to from experience. And like I said, I've, I've dropped a couple of PSI since I properly raced. Now I'm running 28, 26.1. Because I can get into those details, I'm actually running these Quark tyre whizzes. So super clever little things to help out with this video. They send my tyre pressures digitally to my phone. I can even set the sort of parameter of where I want it, plus or minus two PSI, and it flashes green to tell me I'm in that uh, zone. It even sends it to my Garmin, so you can see I've got 26.1 in the front, 28.1 in the rear. So for the sake of this test, I'm gonna now reduce my tire pressures by 25%, which is a lot. Uh, down to 19 on the front and 21 on the rear, but I have seen uh, pro bike checks with other enduro riders and know that they do run them that low sometimes. So I've always wondered if I'm I'm a bit conservative with my tire pressures and I've erred on the side of caution too much. Because normally I feel like I'd rather run too hard, just sacrifice a little bit of grip for having them be reliable and know that I can make a mistake and slam it into a rock and hopefully get away with it. But it's time to see if I can find some more grip and get more feel with lower tire pressures. Yeah. Tell you what, already, I'm not feeling those little rocky bumps quite as much. Definitely getting some sort of dampening from the tyres. Feels a bit smoother. Oh, it does feel quite low on the back actually. Oh, big compressions in those corners where they're sort of their booms and they're bowled out as well. So that is where you really put a lot of pressure on the tires because you're squashing them in and sort of pulling them around. I can feel them sort of rolling a little bit. Not enough to burp, but a bit of movement down there. Right, I've rode the top oh, probably a quarter of the trail and it feels too soft to me. Like any small mistake, it feels like I am gonna just rip my back tire especially. So uh, although it feels good, uh, feels less rough than on the trail, I just feel like it's too risky for me, it's not worth it. So I'd rather run more pressure in the back and just, yeah, lose a bit of grip. I think it's gonna be hardly anything on this trail in these conditions, it'll be like nothing you know, grip-wise. So for the sake of security and not getting stranded on this hillside, got the pump and put some more pressure in. Okay, so I've gone up to what I think is a bit of compromise. I'm running 23 on the front, 26 on the back. Let's see how that feels. And it doesn't feel like I've lost any grip for it, but whoa, who knows? Whoa. Oi. Stuff like that, where I can gap a bit 
And I've only been in this trail a couple of times, so I don't really know what's on the backside. But I feel like I'm just more confident, because if I jump, then there is a rock there. At least I've got the harder tyres that will hopefully deal with it. So loose and dry. I feel the difference in my front and back tyre there. Where I've got the barrel on the front, it digs into that dust. The rear one doesn't as much. And it's the rear one I'm trying to use to slow down quite a lot. Higher pressures mean a smaller contact point, less grip and can feel harsh, but they're more resistant to punctures from impact. Lower pressures mean a larger contact point, more grip, more compliance, but more tyre squirm and more likely to get impact punctures. So I think the conclusion for me is I'm going to lower them a little bit and you know, go down to a 27 and a 25, so one PSI lower than I normally am. Uh, maybe it's a bit of age, I don't need them quite as hard as I used to, but that feels about right for me. And I'd rather lose a little bit of grip than have a reliable tyre that hopefully will get to the track in one, bottom of the track in one piece. Um, if you want to see a video, uh, the tour of the Continental Factory, see how tyres are made, that was a super interesting one, over there for that one. Another video on tyre pressure over there. Jack, have we got time for another run? Oh, yeah. Needs to test again. Right, subscribe, give us a thumbs up.